Greetings from Guadalajara. Thank you for watching. Today, I wanted to tell you a little bit about this other book, which is an anthology of papers by this guy here, Warren McCulloch. And the anthology is entitled Embodiments of Mind. And by far the most famous paper uh, reprinted in this, uh, which can be has, is, has been reprinted many, many times in many places. And it can be the original uh, published in the, um, in the Bulletin of Mathematical Biophysics in 1943, uh, can be downloaded for free uh, from Springer uh, legally. Um, and uh, the title of that paper is A Logical Calculus of the Ideas Immanent in Nervous Activity. And the weird word there is imminent. Uh, that's a, a fancy word to uh, refer to intrinsic or inherent to, uh, which still uh, raises some uh, uh, doubts about, well, why, why use that term? But that aside, uh, this paper is considered as uh, describing the first um, uh, neural network model. Um, and uh, McCulloch and Pitts don't use that expression. They don't speak of neural networks. Um, they speak of uh, nets of neurons. And uh, they speak of uh, axons. They speak of uh, synapses. Um, uh, and uh, the very first phrase of the abstract of the paper goes like this, and I quote, because of the all or none character of nervous activity, neural events and the relations among them can be treated by means of propositional logic, end quote. So this encapsulates the primary, the main uh, approach here. Uh, it's to describe the functioning of uh, brain circuits, again, it's, that's not a, an expression they use, of uh, nets of neurons. It says the nervous system is a net of neurons, I'm, I'm quoting there. Uh, the functioning of nets of neurons uh, in terms of propositional logic. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the references of this paper, it has only three references. Carnap's The Logical Syntax of Language, Hilbert and Ackerman's uh, Foundations of uh, Theoretical Logic, and Whitehead and Russell's Principia Mathematica. That's it. There are no references to any neuroscientific paper. Uh, there are no references to Ramon y Cajal, uh, uh, although they speak of neurons. Uh, there is no reference to Sherrington, although they speak of synapses. And perhaps more importantly, they do not mention another very important name in the history of neural network modeling, which is Nicholas Rashevsky, who in 1933, a decade before this paper, published what can be regarded as, as the first mathematical model of neuronal function. Um, so it, it's interesting, I don't know why, uh, McCulloch and Pitts don't cite Rashevsky. I would think that that's, that's a, a, a mandatory <laughs> reference um, because it, it anteceded th this kind of approach uh, by a decade. Um, so uh, it, the, uh, a major difference between the McCulloch and Pitts approach on the one hand and Rashevsky's approach is that the latter was formulated uh, as a continuous time model, where time is, as the, as the term refers, uh, as the term uh, implies, it, time is a continuous, uh, it flows. Whereas in McCulloch and Pitt's approach, uh, time is conceived of as uh, consisting of discrete moments or occasions or time steps, moment one, moment two, moment three. And um, aside from the fact, of course, that again, McCullough and Pitts proposed the use of propositional logic uh, as a means to uh, model a neural network or, or brain circuit uh, function or, or 
nets of neurons, the functioning of nets of neurons. Um, in figure one of the paper, one finds several, uh, um, several possible neural networks. And I would say that C is sort of the, the, uh, the, the typical one, the most traditional one, uh, where you have two input units, we would call them less misleading, misleadingly, uh, we would call them neural units instead of neurons. Of course, these are not neurons, right? These are pictorial, very simplified schematic uh, uh, representations of neurons. Um, so you have two input neural elements connected to one output element. So this is sort of the traditional example uh, that today, uh, after this paper, is uh, more intuitively uh, and more clearly, perhaps, and in a more friendly way, um, in terms of uh, truth tables. So, for example, a, a system like this uh, with, uh, with, uh, with two, two inputs and one output can be described completely, the possible function can be described completely in terms of or through a truth table for two propositions, P and Q, for example, where the two propositions would correspond to the two input units. Okay. So, um, of course, we, we find here the, the, uh, uh, the main uh, proposal of this model, which is what is known today as a threshold activation function. And they describe it in this, in this way to keep up with the uh, symbolism uh, found in Carnap's uh, logical syn syntax of language. So uh, this is a very, very unfriendly, <laughs> complicated way of um, expressing what today is uh, more intuitively or more clearly um, and more concisely way uh, to uh, express this activation function um, in terms of, uh, of what is known technically in linear algebra as the inner or dot product of two vectors, one vector of uh, input, I should say this, one vector of input activations and one vector of connection weights. Now, the, the, the expression connection weight is not found in this paper. That description came later on. Um, <clears throat> so for a network like that with two inputs connected to one output, <clears throat> one can build a total of 16 truth tables, among which we find the ones that describe the uh, familiar um, logical operators in propositional logic. For example, conjunction or and, um, disjunction for or, uh, conditional for if then, and so on and so forth. So um, <clears throat> I might later on go into uh, more technical detail of how that, that is done. Um, but for the moment, I want to end by uh, saying that at the end of the paper, uh, in, the, in the consequences, in, the, in the, the, uh, the section, the last section of the paper entitled consequences, they speak of uh, the possibility that uh, this kind of approach can be used to theorize about the mind and uh, the mental in a purely physicalistic, materialistic way. Uh, they don't speak of cognition there, that, that term didn't exist at that time. Uh, that term came later over a little bit over uh, a decade later. Um, but um, they, they uh, well, they become very cryptic. Uh, they speak of the thing in itself uh, and, uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, and I'm looking for the, uh, where is it? Sorry, they, they excluded it. To say, for example, it is apparent that every idea and every sensation is realized 
by activity within the net. So that's perhaps what they refer to by imminent. So uh, the, uh, the, the internal, the inner work, workings of, the, of a, uh, a neural network as we would call it today. Well, that's it for today. Leave any commentaries uh, or questions you wish. Uh, be safe and be well. <laughs>